Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to a new series that I've started called Second Glances. Second Glances won't be a weekly series that is there every week, because there may be some weeks I look at a distribution that I haven't looked at, and I can't be called a second glance, now can it? <laughs> However, when I run across a distro that I've looked at in the past that I may want to see how they're doing, whether they've improved some things or you know, if they've gone downhill, you never know, it can go both ways. You know, an upgrade to software isn't always an upgrade. Many times a new version can end up with more bugs than the previous version. So it's not always a good thing to run out there and just jump in there and throw on the latest and greatest. But, nonetheless, let's get into second glances for this week. Today we are looking at Mokulu 6.0 from South Africa. This is the XFCE version of Mokulu. I thought I'd try something a little bit different since last time I think I looked at the KDE version. My last review of this was done on the 27th of December last year. And they've made some improvements here and there, and there are some other things that I found is kind of a little bit buggy. First, let's talk about the installation of Makulu. They have changed the way that you install Makulu, uh, emulating more of the Linux Mint Debian Edition way of doing things. Now, this has actually simplified and make, made the installation a little bit easier, but it has extended how long it takes to install the system. I had, after I set everything up and had it copying, to set the system to the side and just let it go for 15, 20 minutes or so while it copied data. I honestly was thinking, man, how much is it copying? Because it did take a little bit longer than I'm used to. One thing, however, that they have fixed, if anybody has installed some of the older Makulu versions, you will know that the Makulu user is the default user. And it gives you the option, at least in the old installs, to change the user ID. And when you do that, it does mess up a few things because what it's actually doing, I believe, is just renaming the user from Makulu to your new user. There are shortcuts and pointers inside of the profiles in the older version that would be broken because they'd be looking for specific file directories under home Makulu. And those, of course, don't exist if you change the user directory. They have fixed that in this new version, and that is a good thing. That has been very beneficial because I noticed most of those problems are gone now. Because prior, I, I had a lot of issues with that. However, there have been a few bugs that I wrote down. One being that when Makulu Live DVD started up, I couldn't get my internet to work. I would come down here and I'd click on the wireless thing and I'd choose my wireless provider or, or you know the my my network etc and it wouldn't give me an option it wouldn't prompt me to be able to put in my security codes and I ended up having to actually manually open up network settings and go to the wireless area and set that up all manually and then I could click on it and it would connect to my network and everything would be fine. That's a little cumbersome though if you're a new user and you don't know what you're doing. I don't know if that was a hiccup or if that was just some weird issue that will be fixed or my system. But one nice thing I believe, if I remember right, I didn't have to redo my network setup after it installed. It actually maintained that information and on boot up after getting everything installed it was up and running so that was a good thing another thing that I had an issue with was that it no longer sets up the root accounts and other things at, at the installation there is a Makulu setup that Makulu setup is found under menu I believe under system and it's either system or settings, but we will find it real quick so I can point it right here. Yep, under system, Makulu setup. Now this, if 
you're a developer that works with this or and anything like that, I would suggest you try to make it so that, that starts up automatically. Now, if it does, my system on this did not start up automatically, and that does a lot of cool stuff to set up your system, ask you some questions about how you want it to run, and some theming and username, root passwords, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it wasn't that intuitive to know that I should run that manually after the fact. It would have been nice if it just would have popped up. I've seen other distros do that where the initial setup runs immediately on first boot. Uh, that does set a, a lot of things up. Now, one thing I'm not too crazy about the new Makulu is it does use kind of a a random theming process that just kind of changes things on the whim and I didn't like that because I kept setting my background and setting things the way I wanted it to be and within a minute or two suddenly it would be reverting back to something else that I didn't want and it wasn't that intuitive at first to be able to disable that and get rid of it. Now those questions are actually asked within the Makulu setup. Now had I run through that first that would have repaired all those issues and I wouldn't have had a problem with that. Another issue that I ran into, and I'm just kind of bringing up the bad so that we can leave on the good, cool things that I've been very happy with. You know, get that out of the way, all the, the stuff I ran into issues. With the XFCE window manager, it was crashing. What was happening was everything that I would open up, like this window here, would be stuck up here in the right corner or left upper corner. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. Uh, I couldn't move it around. I couldn't resize it. And I found on the internet, that that's a common issue with XFCE and the way to replace it was to run an XFVM4 space dash dash replace and that kind of reset and restarted the uh, window manager for it for XFCE and now as you see everything is working proper up and running going where it wants to go etc and looks a lot better now a really weird thing happened today. I was going to go to the Makulu website as I like to do with most of my distributions, go to their main website so I can show you that. But unfortunately it looks like Makulu may be down today. If I click on this button here to go to Makulu, hi it's coming up. Maybe it was just a weird issue earlier because no more than five minutes before this I was going to MakuluLinux.com and it was coming up saying this website doesn't exist. There are errors. Are you sure you typed it in right? It's like, I know I typed it in right. I even clicked on links. I even, I even went to Distro Watch right there, clicked on the link, and it still failed. Now, you might say, Das Gregor, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about because it worked. Well, maybe I am. Maybe I am crazy. You never know. But, now, it wasn't working a little earlier. So maybe they had a small outage, maybe they were rebooting their servers, who knows. But anyway, if you see here with Makulu Linux, you can get it in Mate Edition, XFCE, KDE Enlightenment, um, there might be a few others from the older past. Yeah, I find it to be very whimsical. I'm kind of disappointed uh, in, their, in their theming this time around because if you notice the hippo that was a real big theme when you log in you saw the hippo going across it had the hippo wallpaper now it just kind of randomly kind of chooses something now I chose just something that I thought looked cool I love these colors together I like the darker themes they kind of go well I like what they have done with the menu here in XFCE how it just kind of looks and feels the sound system worked great out of the box and it had to go tweaking a whole bunch of stuff uh, other than the hiccup of not being able to put in my credentials properly for the network that has been working flawlessly without any problems uh, some the semantic package manager has been installing stuff without issue I did updates immediately rebooted no problem grub is working wonderful it doesn't come with a lot of stuff and I'll talk a little bit about that now you know, if we look at accessories it's just your typical accessories it did come with docky installed which I thought was interesting I haven't tried it and there is conky here and I, those are two of my my 
favorites that I like to run in the background. I'm not running them right now though. And if we look at the games, there's just a few things, but you know, that's that can all be changed. You don't want sometimes a distro to be so bloated with so much that it ends up taking two or three DVDs just to install. You know, give a few things and, and then let the user decide. That's a good idea. And it does come with Steam preloaded, so if you are a Steam fan for Linux, you can install Steam easily. And I have used that in numerous different flavors of Linux. It works very well. Mo just all the Linux games that are available work good. I do have a few that I have from Steam and do enjoy it. Play on Linux is also installed by default. That's another one of those. Uh, it's a wine style emulation that allows you to install Windows games on there and play them. And if we go on down to graphics, now you'll notice they have image magic, but they don't have uh, GIMP installed. They have Pinta. Now, I'm not too familiar with Pinta, but it does say that it can edit images, so maybe it's much like uh, GIMP. Internet, of course, it came default with Thunderbird and I believe also, I'm looking, 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 I thought it had Chromium as the main browser, and it's kind of funny because I don't see Chromium listed there, and that's where it should be. However, it did come with Dropbox installed. That's a nice feature if you use Dropbox. I'm not too crazy about Flare yet. Yeah, that's a download manager. I've never been crazy about download managers. I never had really a need for it. Now, surprisingly, it, it has Mumble here. and I don't know very many people who use Mumble. That's not a, a chat client that I'm too familiar with. I think IRC seems to work a little bit better, and nah, I'm not really ever really used that too much. But we move on. Audacious came preloaded, and I installed, of course, GUVC and the Simple Screen Recorder. It did come with the VLC Media Player, one of my favorites to work with, and it also came with Nero. Now I didn't even know that Nero had an open source version that you could install, but evidently it does. Not that I'm saying that distributions haven't put illegal or, or copyrighted software before on the system, but I am assuming in this case, because I've seen that actually once or twice in other areas, that that's probably a Linux version that's allowed. Now another strange thing that I'm going to mention here in Office, it doesn't come with OpenOffice, it doesn't come with LibreOffice, it comes with the Kingsoft Office Suite, which has the presentation software, your spreadsheet writer, and of course your document writer there. I have never used Kingsoft before. Now I have tried a couple of these, and let me see if I, if I didn't, if I set it up or if it's still the way it was. It pops up here, and it kind of comes to this almost like a website. And that was one thing I was kind of confused about. Not using this before, I kind of felt like I was being sent to a web page instead of to a place to work. Now, I'm not saying that's negative or positive because you do have here templates that you can use and some information about the software, which is always handy to have. And it is not very difficult at all to go over here and say that you want to write a new document and once of course you do that then you're in what you would assume what I would have thought you had to have seen the very first time opening that it's just something different out of the ordinary I don't want to say whoa or yay or anything like that it's just different and different isn't always bad it's just something you may like it you may not that's the great thing about uh, Linux is you have choice. You have choice to choose Kingsoft. You have choice LibreOffice, you know, MySQL, MariaDB, you know, all these different choices that you have to go through. Settings, of course, and system, you know, those are all pretty much the same. And I did bring up, of course, in system, the Maku setup, which you're going to want to make sure that you run the first time you set this up to go through the questions, set your root ID, password, etc., etc. Now, other than those few things here and there, 
the system has been running pretty good. Um, I can't seem to get the weather reporting widget that comes with the system to start properly. It sits there and it'll sit there on detecting forever. It has the right date and time, has the right um, time zone for instance, but for some reason it just can't seem to detect it. Now, and I've looked at this and I can't figure out either how I can right click on it and go in there. There's no really, not really any type of settings to it, properties there and there we go next you can go into there and set that see see I got so distracted with other things I didn't even pay attention to that right there but now here we are hey it says here where it's 102 out there yeah it's getting warmer summer's coming say goodbye to this double digit numbers we're almost in the triples every day now getting hot <laughs> other than that I messed around a little bit with the theming, which is kind of nice. It's real easy to get into uh, the manager settings manager here. Now this was a, this is a good example. When I first opened this up, you didn't have that top bar. It was gone. All you had was this main bar, and it was way above there, so you could not grab onto it. You could not change it. You could not move it. Now that I did that thing with the window manager and restarted it, and I only had to do that once. I thought, okay, I might have to do this every single time I reboot. No, once I fixed that first crash, it seemed to work. And speaking of crashes, the first time I did Makulu setup, it also kind of went through three-fourths of it, and then it just kind of disappeared. And after about three or four minutes going, um, is it working? Is it not working? Um, hmm. Okay, let's just start it over. And then it went all the way through, and I had no problems. But it's just something to, to, to bring up if you have trouble with that. That's something to think about. In the settings, though, it was real easy to go in there and work with your appearances, your desktop, look and feel. These are the standard icons that it uses, uh, Makulu, when I say it, and they're nice. They're, they're kind of different. I always enjoy when a distribution really customizes their look and feel to give their distro some personality. Uh, and a, some reason to why they stand out. I have looked at a lot of distributions in the past where distribution A looks like distribution B and distribution B looks like distribution C and what makes you different? Why should I choose your distro over somebody else's distro when you look like you're just a vanilla cutout and, and you're stuck with this, the same vanilla look and feel? I mean, I hate a distribution that's a KDE that you started up and you've got bare bones KDE staring you in the face and you feel like, eh, I could have had this with just setting up something plain. Well, so it's just something that I think is important and I think Makulu does a great job with that. They, they have that, you know, kind of default theming that just kind of bounces around which I'm not crazy about but they at least give a unique look and feel and I really like it when a distro when they've decided to stick with a theme that even though you can change the theme say you don't like hippopotamuses at all but you know with with at least this you have the choice you can go in there and you can change your your uh, background you can change the look and feel you can change your startup you know look and, and so forth you don't have to keep it but at the same time I think it's great that developers take a little bit of extra effort and they kinda of put it into their own personality into their distribution to make it stand out just a little bit at least to your first impression you know your first impression is always your last impression <laughs> so anyway this is Makulu Linux I hope you enjoyed the review I'll have maybe one more coming up here next Friday and after that I'm going to take a break for a couple weeks. I'll remind you in the next video that I'll be taking a break for a couple weeks, but I just need a break from all these. I've been doing nonstop now for over a year, uh, at least one to two videos a week, and I know that might not sound like much when some of these other YouTubers do a, a distro a day, or, or not a distro a day, but a video a day. But I've got a full-time job that i got to work with, and I only can do these late at night or in the evening. Or, or something like that during my lunch break etc and so it gets difficult I just need a break for a little bit so 
maybe one more video might come out before I kind of take a little bit of time off, but we'll see. But, uh, thanks for watching. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you all later. Bye, guys.